Hey guys, so in today's video, I wanted to do some upkeep and maintenance here in my little paludarium. It's still in progress. Um, I'm, I'm not done yet, but there is a lot of new growth in here and a lot of things have happened and changed in here. And I wanted to share with you guys um, what that is. So um, I'm just going to do a quick overview and then I'll go into detail about the specific things that I'm going to be working on here in here today and some things that I still have to do like um, some more plans for the future and also I want to talk about some things that I wish I did differently when I first did this build so here's the overview and let's start from the top here in the left hand corner so starting off we have this um, Hoya Cartesii here or is it a Curtsii? I'm not sure you guys tell me the first one or the second one um, here on the left hand side it's doing really well here it loves this spot um, as you can see and I can't really remember what Hoya this is but it's pretty happy in here too there isn't any new growth yet still my finger was in the way there isn't any new growth yet but it's stuck in there pretty well and there's new growth actually you guys yeah so I thought that this was from this one but this is the Cartesii growth so it's really happy in there um, this Shepardii is really happy. This is the new growth here. Move this wire. The new growth here. See that baby right there? So it's pretty happy. I just put this Peperomia back there, um, the other day. So it's still sticking in. I can't wait for it to, like, flourish and explode. Um, it'll take that corner really well. And then, um, so far with this African poly here. Actually, this isn't a poly, this is a bambino. So, um, there's two new growth points. Um, for a while there was just one leaf, and now we have a whole bunch of new babies about to shoot up. So, that's pretty happy. As you can see, um, this sphagnum moss came off. So, um, I need to go purchase more sphagnum moss and add it here, and then add moss on top. Um, because as you can see, it's been doing, oh my god guys, I'm so sorry if my phone is so shaky. Um, it's been doing really well here. Um, this, uh, live moss on top of the dried sphagnum moss. Um, and it just looks better too. Um, it takes a really long time for it to rehydrate and come back. And I have yet to put the window sealant on to up the humidity in here. So, um, I've been having to water this like every three days but if I had properly put the window sealant a while ago and the humidity was high up in here the moss would have grown already so next order of business these cuties over here these are the string of spades I believe no they're not are they no these are the string of hearts look how cute they are these are the regular string of hearts they're doing really well in here too. Now over here to this side, um, I added this cute terrarium plant in here. I don't know what plant this is called. This is one of the plants that I don't know the name of in here, but they're perfect for terrariums. I've had it for so long and ever since I put it in here, it exploded. So in the future, I'm gonna continue adding plants that are meant for terrariums because they do really well in this environment. Now, right below it is the string of spades. It's going wild here. So we have one shoot here, another shoot here. We got shoots over here coming down. Um, so I'm going to actually pin these all in. Um, that way they can be spreading around in all the corners here. And then right here we have string of turtles little baby string of turtles oh a little pin I can reuse this pin it's really really weird if I look in the phone camera and then try to touch something I like lose 
<laughs> my lose my sense of grip i don't know am i crazy right below we have a begonia and right below that we have the string of spades following right here is a perfect spot for a plant so i'm gonna add a plant right there i still have to decide what plant that will be probably a trailing one here we have some jungle cacti three different varieties now i'm really surprised but there hasn't been any growth on these three and i don't know why maybe they've just been taking a long time to you know take off but jungle cacti usually grow really fast so i'm confused right next to that we can talk about this black velvet alocasia has a new leaf coming in finally and this old leaf is on its way out i think even old leaves are so beautiful do you hear my foot crack? So yeah, there's this new leaf coming right there. And she's on her way out. And then we can go down just right above the Calatheas. This is a Mykins. And she's pretty happy in here. And then right be behind the Mykins, I don't know why, but I put Hartley Philodendron back here. Um, it hasn't died, despite not receiving barely any light. And that's another thing I wanted to talk about. Um, things I could, if I wish I could change, I would. Really quickly, I'm going to do an overview of, um, let's zoom out actually. Okay, seems like I can so let's zoom out actually. As you can see, this entire front right here is protruding out. So it takes up most of the space on top and covers the light. So the plants on the bottom barely receive any light. And right here you see like no light. And so over here and over there, the light is very minimum. Um, so if that's one thing I could change when I built this paludarium, it was my intention to do sort of like a scoop that way like this i don't know if i'm doing this right like this but it ended up being like this the other way around okay i can't i can't maneuver my hand that way but it ended up being the other way around like this and covering it and covering the entire light so in the future maybe i could um scoop this entire thing out right here Let's just scoop it out and then all of these plants on the bottom will receive light with that being said i do know that on the jungle floor barely any light comes but some does so some of the plants that are thriving it's because they are jungle floor plants and then so that's why i put the calatheas on the bottom because i knew they were jungle floor pl plants um so yeah that's one thing that i would change back to over here um so then we have arc the calatheas we have rattlesnake calathea we have the mayokii mayokii i think it's called mayokii i don't remember what this one's called rufa barbara i could be wrong and then we got um this geo Cleanthes. there's a couple in here that's the other thing too let me get some flash in here actually Okay, so let's get a closer look at what's going on over here. There's a whole bunch of new growth. One, two. There's some back there. I think I felt it. See, this plant, um, it took a little while for it to be happy. But as you can see, there's new growth coming in. This one's still going strong. But um, the great thing about Calatheas is they look like they're about to die and never come back and then boom they come out with a whole bunch of babies um this is what we call acclimating so what i'm gonna do is chop off all of these dead um leaves and um i'm gonna take some of them out but i'm not gonna worry too much because pretty soon uh, another one of my um must need to do must need to do oh my god 
my to-dos um, is to add a cleanup crew in here. So the cleanup crew will love chomping on these. So I'm not too worried about removing all of these. I just want to take like the majority of the majority of them out, clean it up a little bit. But as you can see, the one that's ha the happiest in here is this one. This Calathea has so many new babies. One, two, three. Look down here too. One thing that I want to get down, like get down pat, is how often I should be watering this. This looks so happy. And then this Calathea, I think this is a Dottie. Very happy too. Another one that hasn't done any progress is this jungle cactus. I don't know why, um, but it hasn't grown at all. Another, here's another um, dark mystery is what it's called. There's another space right there for a plant. Begonia, this fern, this fern's pretty happy in here. Look at all this new growth. This heartleaf Hoya, I think it's a Hoya uh, Carii, yeah. Hoya Carii, <coughs> another Begonia, another Calathea, super cute. Um, I think I've done all of the ones on the bottom. So, as you can see, um, my main goal is to cover the empty spaces. For example, over here, um, like with this alocasia, there's this entire like gaping hole. So, my thought would be to just stick some sphagnum moss on top, so that way it just doesn't look like a gaping hole. And like, like I was saying back here... Um, I wanted to add a plant here so there just isn't like this brown spot. So any spot that I see, I do want to eventually fill up um, with a tiny plant that will grow. Oh, this one is called Sunrise, I think. No, Florida Beauty. That's what it's called. It's really happy in here. This Hoya hasn't done anything really. But you know Hoyas. Same thing with this one. Another Hoya that doesn't hasn't done anything. And these empty spaces, I will be filling up. One thing that I noticed is that look how smushed um, it becomes because of the wall. So I don't want to add any plants on here like I thought I wanted to that um, won't be happy if they're smushed. So I'm thinking mostly like trailing strings of things will be happiest here. Um, or maybe I'll just keep it moss. We'll see. But look how good this moss right here looks. It's so cute. I just watered this, of course. Um, now, here's the queen. Queen, where, where, queen? So, I went to Florida, and um, she wasn't properly watered, so she lost her newest baby leaf here. Um, and I was even going to give up and take her out of here because I didn't want to, you know, have complete control over the roots and like see what's going on but then this new one started forming so i was like you know what seems like she's acclimating and she's pretty happy granted i don't think this leaf will come out as big as these but um and also it, when they do start coming out really really big i'm gonna have to take her out of here just because she's t like is in the way of a lot of other plants that are so beautiful as well and she, she just deserves her own pot but the high humidity in here, she's really happy with. And so I'm going to leave her in here for now. But I'm really excited to see what this leaf will look like once it's all grown. And I'll definitely show you guys. This is the Hoya Sunrise. She's really happy in here. It's a good spot for her. This other Hoya, I think it's called a Hoya Tove. One of my favorite Hoyas. And she's in a good spot too. And look. I thought this was a new growth point, but looks like somehow this plant ended up over here. <laughs> okay, and then, oh look, look where she ends up. She just loves to travel. 
love that that um string of things okay so here i got this one from florida and um she had lost her color because she wasn't getting enough sun but i put her up here and she regained her color so fast she's like a centerpiece showstopper in here and i'm obsessed and she's perfect there's literally like there's nothing else to say besides perfection coming down over here we got um this hoya it's a hoya polyneura i'm pretty sure so beautiful i just cannot wait oh guys look at this she has a peduncle forming that's either a peduncle yeah i don't think that's a root i think that's a baby peduncle so i think she may be potentially getting a new leaf soon or maybe a long peduncle and then one day a leaf we'll see um back there behind the queen we have more um what are these called again peperomias no they're not peperomias i forgot what they're called there's a linearis back there too i don't really know if this is a good spot for her she hasn't had any new growth in here but since she's been in here for so long, like, acclimating, I don't really want to disturb her again. I kind of just want to get a full plant of this because the full plant is absolutely incredible. Let's see what else. Oh, right here we have another jungle cacti. Really happy. And then this string of hearts. So happy. And then we got this one. Alocasia aslanii. So this one has a whole story too. She came with this leaf right here. And then when I went to Florida, uh, she wasn't watered properly and she dried out a lot. So she started drying out her end and then she got some sun damage because she got too much light and oh, I thought she was going to lose a whole leaf. And then I saw the light when her baby came through her new leaf. And look how much bigger it is from her little baby sister obsessed so i guess she's like the big sister um let's see we got this silver dragon so here's the thing with this silver dragon um i put it in this spot thinking it was a little too close to the light and then um this is what happened it literally burned um luckily i have her pinned down but there was one time where she got unpinned and that's when that entire thing was like burning poor baby but anyways she finally got a new leaf and look at her like are you kidding me like you cannot make this up and this is like the first one of the first new leaves because I believe, I believe that, yeah, this is the first leaf that she grows in my care. And I know that this new, these new leaves will come out um, loving this highlight, um, this higher light. But alocasias, truthfully, she should be like closer here to her sister. Um, so eventually I think I want to move her down here. Um, just because, first of all, her leaves are really big and take up a lot of space in this spot. Um and because she doesn't really like highlight like that she prefers like um a little bit um like medium to low light but anyways if she's in higher light um it'll increase the silver but if it's like too close it'll get bleached do you see how she's bleached here so she's acclimating but I'm, i know that this one will be fine anyways right behind we have some carnivorous plants I grew all these from babies, and then these tiny three babies right here, I grew from leaf. Um, so I got these carnivorous plants in here because we had a gnat problem, obviously, because the moment that you wet soil, the gnats come running through. They love those, those little fruit flies. So I put these in here, and you can see the little dead gnats in there, the little fruit flies. So, um, I have it in, like, a plastic bag, as you guys can see. And the reason being is because it needs to be in a bog-like situation because that's where it's, like, where it's born, where it thrives. 
um, it needs to be in a bog-like situation because it's it's not an epiphytic carnivorous plant it's a bog carnivorous plant because there are some carnivorous plants like for example the pitcher plant that doesn't need to be like constantly moistened like that but this one like i said and as well as the um the what is it called again i'm losing my train of thought uh the one that snaps it's shut What's that one called? You guys know what I'm talking about. Um, I'll put it on the screen. I lost my words. But anyways, that one and these all like bog-like situation. And basically, the point of what I'm saying is I'm trying to create a bog situation in here when some of the plants don't appreciate a bog-like situation. Like, for example, these Hoya. They wouldn't thrive in a bog situation. They're thriving because they're drying out here. But this one... I don't know where to put it and how to set it up in here. Pretty soon I'll have to move them apart because they're getting pretty big. Like these are already pretty close to each other. But um, I'm going to have to figure out how to make a bog-like situation that has very high light in here. But they can constantly keep moist moistened like it is there without that bag. It's in a little plastic container. Um... So I figured if I have the bag filled, it'll just take the water from there. If you guys have any suggestions, please let me know. But I think that that's everything, guys. Oh, the last plant that I didn't mention right here. That little string of turtles. It's really cute. So... Now I'm really going to quickly um, just pin everything in place in their new spots. And, um, and then I'll just update you guys. Oh, maybe I should come down here with the light because I didn't before. Here is the um, Hartley philodendron I was talking about before. Looks like it has a new beauty coming. And also, this Mykins is pretty happy. Looks like there's some new growth points over there, too. I'm really excited to see what this leaf will look like for this black velvet alocasia. I really don't want to cut this one off. Let, let it take in all the nutrients before I do. Okay, so let me just, like I said, pin these guys up um, a little bit. Maybe I'll let one of them hang. Just because I feel like if I pin them up, um, they will stick. Not I feel, I know that if I pin them, they'll stick to the moss. And then they'll be able to, um, once I start putting nutrients in here, um, because I have yet to um, fertilize in here besides right there. I, I can't fertilize those plants because carnivorous plants can't be fertilized. But anyways, once I fertilize in here, wherever I'm sticking these to, um, the leaves will grow even bigger because they'll have, you know, nutrients. Okay. Okay, guys. So, so far, I've pinned in all of these um, shoots that have been going off over here they're going to be really happy once they stick off um where the node is it's going to come off with a new shoe and new leaves so it's going to be really happy um one thing that i noticed that i forgot to show you guys is how this hoya tove um i was saying there wasn't any new growth but look over here literally an offshoot went over here a little peduncle went over here with two new leaves so she's really happy um so I pinned these, I pinned these, um, I'm just gonna take a look over here and see what's going on over here, because they seem to get a, they seem to be getting a little bit smaller, so I'm gonna try to find, um, places to pin them in so they can also take the nutrients from the sphagnum moss here. Okay, and so I also pinned in these, um, tiny little, um, cuttings. They were already rooted. I rooted them and then stuck them in there, but I'm rooting as well all of the little strings, so 
um, once that they're all rooted, they'll explode even more. But that's it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, once I add more plants in, um, because I have to down here, there's a huge hole here. Um, I have to add a couple more plants in, a cleanup crew, another plant there, more plants everywhere, um, more sphagnum moss. There's a lot going on, and there's a, still a lot more to do. So I want to take you guys on the journey. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or um, advice for me, because this is my first paludarium, so if you guys know about paludariums or know about terrariums and have any suggestions or advice, I'm so open for it and would love to hear it. Thank you so much for guys. Thank you so much for watching, you guys, and have an amazing day.